Hey guys, today we're going to be taking a look at importing the EXR file that we created in the first tutorial from Houdini into Blender. We're then going to set that up using the displacement modifier and the subdivision surface modifier. And we're going to take a look at getting it ready for shading and the next video we'll be importing splat maps. Alright, without further ado, let's get started. So first of all, we're going to start off with deleting everything in the default scene. And we're going to shift A, create a plane. Press N to bring up the properties. And so the dimensions in Houdini for the height field was uh, 1000 by 1000. And it was 151.048 tall. Now, we could technically scale that in Blender, but we would be dealing with some very large values. So if I scaled up by 1000, uh, yeah, scaled up to 1000, as you can see, it's clipping. Uh, you can go into the view and change the clipping settings. Now, one problem I've had with Blender, and I'm sure that this can be solved quite easily, but uh, if you go to every other view that's a 3D view, you have to change uh, the settings. And that can get a little bit tedious. So what we're going to do is we're just going to scale that uh, back down to one by one, uh, actually 0.5. Now let's scale it up by 10. So we're going to do 10 and then the Z height is going to be, it's going to be a ratio. So it's going to be uh, 1.51. So next what we're going to do is we're going to go into edit mode, press tab, right click, subdivide the mesh. We're going to change this to 100 subdivisions. All right, we're going to go to the modifiers tab. We're going to set up a displace, new. You're going to want to change this to UV and you're going to want to just name this uh, terrain. And while we're naming that terrain, we might as well name the plane, uh, the object and the mesh. Okay, so if you go to the modifiers and you hit this button here, you can see the actual texture. So we are going to open that texture there. So that texture I have saved under the tutorial series, textures, simple terrain.exr. So we're gonna import that in. And it might look like an absolute mess for you. And that is okay. So you wanna change the color space to non-color alpha to none. I don't know why, even though it's grayed out, sometimes it uh, it clips on the ends. Set that to none and check alpha. And in mapping, we're not repeating this texture. This texture is just staying once. So we are going to do clip. I also forgot we're going to press control A and apply the scale. Okay, now you're looking at that and you're going, wow, that's pretty small. Let's shade it smooth, by the way. So what you can do is you can scale it up here to that value, which was 1.51. Uh, so we could go 1.51. Or if you like to keep the scale a nice even number, you could just bump up the strength to 1.51. Okay, so now we have our terrain and it's looking pretty low resolution. So if we went into edit mode and we just kept subdividing it, that is an option, but you have no control over it. It's permanent, right? So I think this is fine. This is fine for my computer at least. So I'm going to turn this off, add a subdivision surface, move that above the displacement. I'm going to crank it up to three in the viewport and let's go four in the render. Now let's turn this placement back on. Be prepared for a little bit of time to wait. Now, as you can see, it's a little slow on my computer, but you've got a lot more detail than if you turn that off. Now, if you want some more viewport port performance, if you come up to the properties for the viewport shading, turn off shadow and cavity. Uh, specular lighting doesn't seem to hit the performance very well. And uh, I prefer to leave it on just so you have a better view of what's going on. So the next thing to do so you can get a nice preview going is press Shift A, add in a camera. Make sure that's under your scene collection. Doesn't really matter at this point, but I like to keep it organized. Press Control period zero to go into the camera view. 
grab ZZ to move backwards. Grab Z to move down. Move forward. If you double tap R, you get to some fine control mode. Now it's a little shaky, but if you hold shift, it's very smooth. Okay, so I think that looks nice like that. So if you go into the camera tab and you go under your composition guides and thirds, if you just line up these points with some points of interest, uh, just really helps overall with your composition. Next up, what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the shading tab to world. Now I have this set up for an environment texture, but environment textures take a while to process and some video RAM to uh, deal with and we're not that at the stage of rendering yet so I'm going to import in a sky texture not import in but create the node so if you go back to the default and you go to let's go to the rendered view I'm in cycles right now okay so we've got a sky we don't have a lot of uh, shadows going on so let's create a sun press one on the number pad let's rotate it seven on the number pad Let's rotate uh, towards us this way a little bit, let's say. Now let's see how that looks. Okay, R, Z. Let's control these shadows a little bit. I think something like that looks good for a preview. So let's just do a nice preview render. So 1920 by 1080, let's do 50%. And I think 125 samples is good to go. I'm gonna give that a render and we'll be back shortly. Okay, so the scene rendered out, it didn't take too long. It took about 13 seconds and just under half a gigabyte or just over half a gigabyte of uh, memory. So this is very low resolution. There's not a lot of detail going on, but you can see that there is some stepping going on here um, in the image. So we'll take a look at that in the next video and possibly re-export out the high field. It is a 32-bit floating point uh, RGBA channel. So I'll have to take a look into that and see why that's happening.